Okay, so here we have an iPhone 7 Audio IC. So normally what I would do to lift it up, I will use my heat station set at 400 degrees. It may be different for you. Luckily this wasn't an iPhone with underfill. Um, it's not an Apple refurb, thank God. Um, I'll take it off, clean the solder off the chip and off the board. Uh, doing that, I'll use my soldering iron with my low melt solder and um, I'll wick it um, using a heat gun at around about 250 degrees. Um, so, as you can see, I've already done all that task. So, you can see the four traces at the top, on the top line. So there, you've got J, uh, C12, F12, H12 and J12. This one, C12, is the main culprit that will give you issues like long boot time. Um, it could be um, no loudspeaker when you're making your calls. It could affect headphones. Um, these other three, I believe these last two, I know H12 and J12 I've heard are responsible for the, um, the headphones or microphones on the headphone jack. So, um, but again, I can't remember where I got that information from. But like I say, C12 is the main culprit. So what I will do, I'll... Um, put a bit of flux on them and I'll try and tin these four main pads and I'll be a little bit aggressive with the iron um, my irons at 350 um, just to see if any of them will come off but this phone is very good condition um, so them three are very stuck on but as you can see C12 a light tap and it just literally falls off in on the iron um, with absolutely no effort at all. So I'm confident that F12, H12 and J12 are absolutely fine. It's just this one. So now I'll tin that trace and I'll get a bit more solder on the other three. Well, obviously that's a bit too much solder so I'll just wick off the excess. Again, my I think my wick is 1mm one mil wick um, and I'm just using the heat gun at 250 so them other three I'm absolutely happy and confident they'll be sound so now what I will do is um, I think the, uh, the jumper wire that I'm using is 0.02, I think. So I'll tin it first. Uh, tin the jumper wire, because obviously you've got that plastic coating on it. And then get it in place. As long as it's either connected to R1103 or the actual trace, doesn't matter as long as it's getting the information to that resistor you'll be fine so then I'll give it a good clean because I know a lot of a few techs don't bother with the um, conformal coating but I'm always paranoid of a bit of risk um, for the sake of a couple of seconds while you just quickly put a little bit of uh, UV mask on there to keep it in place um, it's not really a massive task. So while that's under the UV lamp, I can quickly reball the uh, audio chip. So again, you can just take all their old rubbish solder off um, using your low melt and flux. So it cleans the pad nice. I don't bother wicking them, I'll be honest with you. Um, find it no point uh, because, well, You'll see, I'll just literally now it's as clean as it's going to get. 
I'll put the uh, stencil on. I use the 3D stencils. I don't think they're Quanlay, but I'm not sure. I'll use my solder paste to get in all the um, all the cavities. Make sure it is in everywhere. And then my heat that I'm using now is at 250 degrees again. Quick clean up. And then on the chip itself, what I like to do is just reflow the balls with some flux. Just prevents any, any, um, balls jumping together because as you can see you sometimes get a little bit of solder paste residue inside so what i like to do is just put a little bit of flux on there and then just give it a little bit more heat again and then all the balls go all nice and uniform see some of them might not be fully centered so again just doing that little procedure it makes them all nice and centered yeah look at my balls nice Okay, so the UV mask should be cu nicely cured now. So now I'll just make sure that the jumper is in a nice position and it's a little bit raised so it's not totally sunk down into the hole. So I know that when the chip sits down, it will make a nice contact. Flux on every little pad. Goes without saying, always make sure your orientation of the chip is right. So I always like to use this little heat shield that I've made. Um, I think it was just from a back plate, um, an iPhone screen back plate, and a couple of coins stuck on it. Um, it just helps with not prevent with you know not getting a lot of heat on the actual NAND which is right next to it or maybe even um, disrupting Homer which the chip just below it um, and tries to keep the heat more centralized in the middle because you don't want it going crazy and then doing in the baseband on the other side um, And then obviously just clean. Well, wet, give it a couple of seconds to cool down, make sure the balls have solidified. And then give it a good clean, get rid of your flux. What I like to do as well is um, I will put the phone on the DC power supply connect it just to make sure we've not got a short and then I'll do a boot um, a soft boot quickly before I put the phone in the housing just to make sure we've not got any um, shorts and it boots nicely if you have got a short you'll feel the chip get red hot and then chances are you're getting that phone come back to you so just food for thought right that's it thanks for watching like and subscribe